Differential Leveling When two points are at such a distance from each other that they cannot both be within range of the level at the same time, the difference in elevation cannot be found in single setting. It has to be found out by dividing the distance between the points in two stages by turning points on which the staff is held. The operation of leveling to determine the elevation of points at some distance apart is called differential leveling. Now, let us find out how differential leveling is done and the methods of booking and reducing the elevation of points. Let us assume a scene where leveling is to be done between two points A and B. Let us divide the distance between AB into three parts by choosing two additional points serving as turning points as TP1 and TP2. Now, place leveling staff over points A and TP1 and set the instrument between points A and TP1. Let the reference level of a point AB say 240 meters. Level the instrument and sight the leveling staff at A. The reading is, say, 2.024 meters. Now sight the leveling staff at point TP1 and take the foresight, say, 1.42 meters. Now place the leveling staff over points TP1 and TP2 and set the instrument between TP1 and TP2. Level the instrument and focus the level over the leveling staff at TP1. Note down the reading. Say 1.986 meters. Now take a foresight at the leveling staff placed at point TP2 and take the reading say 2.1 meters. Now Place the leveling staff over points TP2 and B and set the instrument between these points. Level the instrument and focus the leveling staff over TP2 and note the reading, say 1.722 meters. Now take a foresight on the leveling staff placed over station B and take the reading as say 1.010 meters. Note down all the readings in a field book and the elevation of points is found out by an operation known as reduction of level. The reduction of the elevation of points from the observed staff readings can be done in two methods. Height of instrument method and rise and fall method. Let us now learn about height of the instrument method. In this method, the height of the instrument, 242.024 meters, is calculated for each setting of the instrument by adding back sight to the elevation of the benchmark. The elevation of reduced level of TP1 is 240.604 meters calculated by subtracting height of the instrument from the foresight. For the next setting of instrument, the height of the instrument is obtained by adding the backside taken on TP1 to its reference level. Hence, height of instrument is 242.59 meters. The process continues till the reference level of last point is obtained. The following is the specimen table of a level field book illustrating the method of calculating reduced levels by height of instrument method. Now that we have learned height of instrument method, let us now learn the rise and fall method. In rise and fall method, the height of the instrument is not at all calculated but the difference of level between consecutive points is found by comparing the staff readings on the two points for the same setting of the instrument. 
the difference between the staff readings indicate a rise or a fall according as the staff readings at the point is smaller or greater than that at the preceding point. On citing the level from point A to point TP1, there is a rise of 0.604 meters. Hence, the reference level of station TP1 is 240.604 meters. Similarly, backside on TP1 is 1.986 meters and foresight on TP2 is 2.1 meters. Hence, there is a fall of 0.104 meters and the reference level of TP2 is 240.49 meters. When the level is between TP2 and B, there is a rise of 0.712 meters. Hence, the reference level of B is 241.202 meters. Thus, if the level of any one point is known, the level of the next will be obtained either by adding its rise or subtracting its fall. The following is the specimen page of the level field book illustrating the calculations of reduced levels by rise and fall method.